Dale Earnhardt Jr. says JRM is still at the table for cup ownership, and Todd Gillen gets an extension. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Dale Earnhardt Jr. once again in the news. Obviously, the number eight trademark expired on the DEI side of things on June 3rd. He talked about it on his podcast this week, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Download over on Dirty Mo Media. Go ahead and watch the clips over there. I can't put any in here because Mike Davis is more protective than Therese Earnhardt, actually, when it comes to their clips being used elsewhere. And I don't feel like getting flagged right now. So Dale talked about that over there. But he also talked about the topic of NASCAR Cup Series ownership. And if there's one thing people on the Internet absolutely love to do, it's argue about absolute nonsensical things with bots more than likely. But it's they love to hypothetically spend Dale Jr.'s money. Dale can go out and buy two of the SHR charters. He and Kevin Harvick can form Earnhardt Harvick Racing. And they can have a two-car team with Josh Berry and Noah Gragson and Bass Pro Shops as the sponsor. This is this wonderful made-up world of just unlimited money and resources uh, like you're building a team out in nascar thunder or something along those lines none of that's going to happen and dale talked about it on the podcast and he said essentially that jrm remains at the table for cup ownership they're open to opportunities he said they've talked to a number of different people about partnerships about investments but he said at the end of the day none of those have felt 100 percent right they haven't felt like the perfect fit for them that's why they haven't done it he goes on to say basically that they're not going to buy a charter. He said that that initial investment is just too much for them. And it's a steep investment, especially if you want to have a two-car team. Because having a single-car team right now just isn't really the way to go. That's JTG Doherty Racing. Outside of punching Kyle Busch in the face, they haven't really done much uh, of remembrance this season. So Dale makes a lot of sense. And essentially, he's like, that's a big check to write to essentially never see again, which uh, I don't necessarily agree with that because the charter does create equity in, you know, in the value of it. And if you have, you know, you continue to have media rights go up and depending on what the revenue split is for teams, that could be a pretty profitable, you know, uh, piece of paper, essentially, at the end of the day for somebody else to come in and potentially buy if he ever wanted to get out of the series. And I think the way that he kind of mentioned it to me, at least, it felt like he's saying, I'm writing this big check because, well, I'm never going to sell it off type of situation here. So buying a charter outright just does not seem like it's in the cards at all. And honestly, when Dale passed on potentially buying the BK charters back when they were like four to five million dollars a piece yeah his chances of buying a charter have gone out the window at this point because he's not spending that much money but a partnership could be really interesting and I'm kind of curious to see who they've talked to because I think there's a couple of different people out there that they've probably kicked the tires with maybe they kicked the tires with SHR right that was a big rumor last year I don't think anything was ever actually serious about that. Maybe they kicked the tires and had discussions with somebody like JTG Doherty Racing, who we know that they're losing the Geschichters now as they head over to probably Joe Gibbs Racing by the sounds of it. And that means Gordon Smith and Brad Doherty are now the owner and co-owner of that team. Having an investment from a team like JRM would be absolutely massive. Maybe they've looked at something like a Cog Racing or maybe even an RCR as an investment type of, of spot for it. Both of those teams are up in Welcome, North Carolina currently, and that just that's pretty far from JRM. And I feel like if Dale and Kelly are investing in something, they want to be able to be hands-on with it. So I think there's a number of other opportunities out there. Maybe a track house eventually down the line could be a spot for them. I'm just throwing out ideas here with, with Chevy teams because obviously, you know, he's not going to field anything other than Chevrolet's. Uh, I believe he still has a personal services contract with Chevrolet as well. So for Dale... The options are out there, and he acknowledged it. Like, yeah, we've had discussions before. Now it's just, will they ever actually act on those discussions and, you know, potentially join the Cup Series? I think we all want to see it at this point. And I think the odds are probably decent in the near future to see something happen, but it's not going to be JRM itself going up to the Cup Series. It will be JRM with, you know, whoever else along there. Dale's been fielding cars in the Xfinity Series since 2003, since 2005 with JRM. It's time that he gets into the Cup Series at some point, just at the very least. As he said multiple times, he wants to see one of his cars race the Daytona 500. He can do that now without a charter, 100%. Like if they wanted to buy a Gen 7 Cup car, uh, get it ready, go down to Daytona and qualify for the 500 as an open car. He is more than capable of doing that. And I think everybody would love to see that happen at some point. So Dale Jr., not ready to be a cup owner yet, but it remains at the table. Moving on, Todd Gillen has signed a multi-year extension to remain at Front Row Motorsports. 
What car number is he going to drive? Who is his sponsor going to be? Who are his teammates going to be? Well, that's all to be determined. Obviously, right now, he currently drives the number 38 car. They didn't announce him for the number 38, which maybe he'll be in the 34 or the 36, or maybe they're completely changing their number sequence altogether. I'm not 100% sure here because we do know that the 4, 41, 14, and 10 are all up for grabs now. I don't know if FRM wants to just rebrand itself as SHR 2.0 here and do a little cosplaying like Gallagher 2, but maybe they could if they wanted to. That's two Gallagher references this week alone. I think maybe the other one was on TikTok. Regardless, Gallagher is apparently just dominating my brain at the moment. So for Todd Gillen, I think it's definitely the right move for him. Definitely the right move for FRM. He's a guy that you can build around. He has continuously gotten better. His season in terms of top 10s this year has not been as good as it was last year at FRM, but he's still a guy that has consistency. He has speed. And as that team tries to take the next step up now as a tier one Ford team, I think Todd is the perfect guy for that. It's taken a while for Todd Gillen to mature into kind of the driver that he is. Remember, he came on the scene wins that ARCA race when I think he was like 16 years old out at Phoenix, and it looked like he was going to be the next guy. Lights out. And the next Joey Logano, right? Best thing since sliced bread. Can't miss prospect. And things just did not work out for him at Kyle Busch Motorsports. He wins that race at Martinsville, yells over the radio at Kyle to stay in his motorhome, not to even come to victory lane. That was bizarre. Gets dropped there, signs at FRM, and obviously has now found his way in a sense. So for Todd, it's a Great spot for him, especially as FRM attempts to continue to glow up like one of those TikTok videos 10 years after they graduated high school. Some of them are good. Some of them, 10 years is a long time. So for Todd, it is great for, for him. So let me know in the comments what you think about Dale Jr. Potentially maybe getting into the ownership game if the right partnership comes along. And Todd Gillen, what are your thoughts on him? Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard. Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.